Hello, I'm Benjamin Adams, attorney, and this is Michael Kajowski, an attorney. We're here from the State Bar of Wisconsin to talk to you about Healthcare Decisions Day, which is April 16th this year. That's a date that's picked to be the day after taxes are due in order to encourage you to do healthcare decision making and planning. Yeah. So let's talk about advanced care planning and healthcare decisions. Uh, you know, the State Bar is going to offer their healthcare decisions guide free for the public for a week surrounding April 16th. And uh, I use that guide often in my uh, client work in helping people prepare for advanced care planning. Uh, you've, you've told me that you've had to make some health care decisions for, for some loved ones over the years. Yes, 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 I have. Is that a pretty simple thing to do? No, not at all, not at all. Uh, the people really need to have the talk. Uh, it's such a different experience when you're the one on the hot seat having to make the decisions. I, I agree with you completely having done some decision making for my parents eventually. Yeah. Um, you know, as a lawyer, I always thought the biggest task was to get a document prepared where my client named an agent. And then I thought my job was done, and I thought my client's job was done. But you said the conversation is important, and what do you, what do you mean by that? Oh, yeah, I mean, you, you're right. As the lawyer, we want to just fill in the boxes, get the initials, get the signature and the notary, and we're good to go. But without the conversation, the, the paper's just the starting point, the conversation. We need to understand the value system of, of the person we're, we're uh, representing and their specific desires and their fears and their concerns. And, and that, the only way that's going to happen is taking the time, sitting down and talking to them. You, ever been an, you mentioned you were an agent for your uncle and he was not a talkative person. He was a crusty old fella, that's right. He was very cynical and the older uh, uh, and more terminal he got, he became more cynical. So try as I might, he did not leave me much, if anything, to go on. And it made it so much harder when uh, he finally was unable to communicate and people are asking me, you know, what did he want? What should be done? And I really didn't feel like I was in charge. I felt like the situation was pushing me rather than uh, me being a part of, of the process. I think it's really hard to be an effective advocate for somebody if you don't understand their values and you don't know how they how they would make those decisions if they were faced with a medical choice at any point. It is, it is. I mean ultimately we should be making the decisions based on their best interest but it, that yeah again on paper that sounds nice but when you're sitting there bedside and somebody's saying what do we do now here's your choices uh, you, you wish you would have had more guidance than, than uh, what you did. And, and you mentioned to me also that you had been a decision maker more recently for, for other family members and that it went much better. Oh yeah, ironically, it was about 20 years later where I was uh, again named the agent for a, a, a relative and she was about 97 and we had everything planned. She had no problems talking about end of life and, and dying with dignity and what she wanted done and she had everything laid out all the way down to what was going to be served as the drinks at the meal after the funeral but um, when she did finally have her stroke and was unable to communicate it was so much easier to stand up and say I know what this lady wants this is what we're going to do you know um, I want to be able to see the records you know it was just easier to to take charge, not in an arrogant way, but, but to not let the situation uh, railroad me, but to, to be right in there and be a part of it. And I think that's a blessing that people can give to their agents is to, to fully inform them. You know, there are some situations where, where younger adults should be doing these documents, and, and they're not really doing them in contemplation of end of life. They're doing them so that they're appointing a trusted decision maker who will be able to, to make the best choices for them later on if something happens to them. That's true. One thing to keep in mind too is that's not necessarily the firstborn or the first son or the old whatever. It, the, the person needs to be trusted, needs to understand uh, your values. Don't just default to somebody. Talk with them and make sure that they understand and they're on the same wavelength with you. Sure, and as a lawyer, most of my clients come in and, and they want their oldest child to be the decision maker. That's kind of where many of them start. Yeah. And, and I think our job is to try to get them to understand they need the most responsible, logical, level-headed decision maker for medical choices yeah. who, who's gonna represent their, their values yeah. the yeah. best. 
Um, there are some good, if I could give a plug to the State Bar's uh, guide, A Gift to Your Family. Oh, yeah. Healthcare planning guide, which will be, uh, as I mentioned earlier, put on the website for free for a week. Um, there are some nice t discussion topics and discussion points in there for, for agents to be able to bring up to the, the person appointing them for the discussion purposes. Yeah, it does. It really helps. I've used it too, and it really helps break the ice. It really helps get that discussion flowing so that um, everybody understands. And it, it, dying with dignity is important. It, it, it's important to both, to everybody and it really needs to be respected. We're so willing to talk about uh, cigarettes and AIDS. I mean, now's the time where we got to start focusing in on, on the, uh, respectful end-of-life issues. Sure, and I think another idea is that just because you did a health care power of attorney once upon a time doesn't mean that it should stay that way forever because your, your decisions, your choices, your values don't stay the same. Correct. Things, I, yeah, things change as you go along, and thankfully, too, both in the legal field and the medical field, we're evolving and maturing in this aspect too. So, so uh, the people that you deal with now, uh, I think are much more tuned in than they were 20, 25 years ago when I had my first run in with the system. I think that's true. I think it's hard for, for somebody who's a family member to be a, an effective advocate with the medical community unless they really dig in and find out what the what the the offerings are what kind of treatments or tests are being offered and what's the purpose yeah exactly it's important exactly. to ask why do you want to do that test and what are we going to do when we find the yeah. result what's that's what's true the you next need to be in, yeah plan. you need to be informed about the procedural stuff too as well as just what mom or dad would have wanted mm -hmm. yeah and i think what happens if somebody doesn't appoint someone on a health care power of attorney and they become incapacitated then it's a little bit of a mess. I mean, we have to get a guardianship appointed, and, and you just rather not go that way if you didn't have to. I think one of my favorite techniques with clients is I, I get them to do planning because I tell them if they don't do their own planning and pick the person they want, sure as shooting, the judge is going to appoint somebody they wouldn't choose. They wouldn't have picked. You're right. So I think it's important to do this planning to pick your own advocate. Yeah but then you need to go the next step and, and really sit down and talk in depth uh, and use a tool like a gift to your family or the State Medical Society has a, a publication, uh, a new health care power of attorney yeah. that they've developed with a discussion guide that has some nice questions in it too. Yeah. So there I are agree. lots of resources if people will, will just get this done. Yeah. I think, um, why again did they name uh, Health Care Decisions Day or why did they pick the date of April 16th? There's only two things that are certain in life, death and taxes. Right. So let's make sure that if you're so willing to do, focus on one, you really need to focus on the other one too. It does make it easier to remember, I think. It does, it really does. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us for this conversation about healthcare planning. If you check the website of the State Bar of Wisconsin, wisbar.org, there'll be a free download of A Gift to Your Family, Our Healthcare Planning Guide. It's important to get these documents in place and have conversations in depth with your agents. We again thank you for joining us.